listening to One Quick Question with InfoMedia, your source for answers to your questions about websites, digital marketing, and more. I'm your host, Carrie Rollwagon. Today's episode is a live One Quick Question event. So we have one more live event left this season. So if you're in the Birmingham area, we would love to see you on Thursday, September 21st at the Little Professor in Pepper Place. We have coffee from June Coffee and tacos from Lady Bird. All of it is free, and you get a presentation on a specific topic, but you also get a chance to like ask your questions from the speaker as we record. And as always, we'll have that available on the podcast too in case you're not in Birmingham, but if you are in town, we would love to see you. You can grab your free ticket in the show notes to this episode or anywhere you find InfoMedia, including our blog and social media accounts. But on today's episode, we are doing a deep dive into podcasting. So I'm actually the speaker on this episode um, because I've run a few different podcasts. Obviously, one quick question. Um, And then also my podcast, The Localist. Those are the longest running of my podcast, but I've had a couple others too. But here's the thing. Running a podcast for your business is very different than making an entertainment podcast. And a lot of the the information and advice that's out there is for more of the entertainment side. But when you run a podcast for your business, you'll have different goals and different strategies for reaching those goals. And we'll talk about all of them on today's episode. So here is our live recording of One Quick Question with InfoMedia. Thanks. Yeah. (laughs) Um, All right, so when we think of podcasts, I think that usually what comes to mind are those big entertainment podcasts, like uh, maybe the Dak Shepherd's podcast or My Favorite Murder or whatever your favorite murder podcast is, um, or like Joe Rogan or something. Uh, this kind of like cult of personality, huge podcast that's kind of either celebrity driven or personality driven. And when people talk about the podcast market being oversaturated, I think that's the kind of podcast that they're talking about. It doesn't mean you can't start an entertainment podcast now, but the chances of hitting it big, especially if you're just sending your podcast to the podcast platforms and promoting it on your own social media, is pretty unlikely. Uh, Or you're going to hit it big in like a bad way. Um, You said something wrong and it never dies. Uh, So um, entertainment podcasts, I think, are the ones that, unless you have a network behind you or a celebrity behind you or a lot of advertising money, probably that market is oversaturated. But the good news is there are, you don't have to do that kind of podcast. You can also do like a business podcast or a personal brand podcast which are slightly different, but like for what we're going to talk about today are kind of interchangeable. And I think there is a ton of possibility in doing that kind of podcast. Um, But it's important to talk about like what that is and what kind of results you're going to see from a business podcast as opposed to like an entertainment podcast. It's important if you have a boss because your boss will probably come to you and be like, I looked up what Joe Rogan is doing and we're not doing anything like that. Um, like trying to get you to go viral. I used to have a boss who would always say, and make it go viral. Um, like, so it's important when your boss comes to you that you have those numbers. Like, well, those are not our metrics. Our metrics are, we're looking at this and this and this, and those are growing. And even if you don't, if you're your own boss or you don't have a boss, maybe this is for your personal brand, it's good to know because you just get in your head about this. And I know that because I've done that. Like, I was complaining to my husband that, you know, I feel like I have this great podcast, I have great people on the podcast, and yes, it's growing, but it's not growing as much as these other podcasts that I see. And he was like, well, you're playing baseball and complaining that you didn't get a touchdown. Like, and I was like, that's exactly right. This is a different game. This game has different rules. And if you're going to do an entertainment podcast, that's fine. But if we're gonna start like a business podcast or a personal brand podcast, we can't be judging ourselves by those same metrics. So the way Forbes puts this um, is it's a misconception that measuring business podcasts is comparable to entertainment podcasts. Rather than downloads and subscribers, businesses should focus on increased web traffic, networking with guests, and awareness of their market. And I completely agree. There are actually other things even beyond this that a business podcast can do for you, 
But say your boss comes to you and says like, well, why aren't our downloads, like I see them growing, but they're not growing exponentially. Well, then maybe you can point to your web traffic, maybe you put transcriptions on, the, on your website so you're able to get like much more content, like much more, you know, like SEO because those, those topics that your business is talking about are now on your website. Maybe you can look at your social media and say, when we put a video clip from when we record our podcast, those get so much more engagement than the other clips. Or you can say like, this is how many times our support department has used our podcast to answer questions or how many times our leads have mentioned that they've heard the podcast. So it's just helpful to think through those things. Like, what do you want to get out of this? And does what a podcast can do match up with what you're wanting to get from your business? So the two podcasts that we're gonna talk about mostly today, um, we're gonna talk about them because they are my podcasts and I know a lot about them, um, but also because they fit into these categories. So The Localist was, I would consider it more of like a personal brand podcast. Um, it's not my face on there, but it was essentially to promote me. So what The Localist is, is every week I would interview a local business owner about running a business. Um, that's what it's about, but the reason behind it was because in 2019, I was still working as a freelancer. Most of my freelancing was for Infomedia, but I had other clients too, and I wanted a way to stay top of mind to those clients. And when you're constantly on your own social media saying like, I am a writer, like here's a picture of me with a pencil, and here's a picture of me with a laptop, like there are only, <laughs> there's only so much you can do with that. Um, and I'd already laid a lot of the groundwork. A lot of people in, t like, in town especially knew who were hiring this for this position already knew I was a writer. But I wanted a way to get in front of them consistently and have them remember really that I even existed. And this was a way to do it and to constantly have a fresh way to be in front of people. And it worked. It actually worked kind of too well because very soon after where I came on full time at Infomedia and did not need this as a platform and just had to turn a lot of work down, but like, uh, I still enjoyed it, so I kept doing it. But like, that was what it was for. Did I enjoy, do I love small businesses? Yeah. Do I love talking about it? Yeah. But it needed to do something more in, in order to be wor worth my time, really. So for One Quick Question, that's a bu business podcast. It's called One Quick Question with Infomedia. You know? And what that is about is kind of demystifying tech terms. Um, those things that people just jargon that people throw out and even when you Google it it's just more jargon like basically our podcast is just talking to talking like a real person and explaining that stuff um, so that's what it is but what it did for us like if you'll notice it says established 2020 I don't think I have to remind you what was going on in 2020 um, so we had had we called them lunch and learns then but they were events like this that we felt like we're so powerful to getting to know people and meeting people in person. And obviously we could not do that uh, in 2020. So we wanted and we were looking for a way to continually reach out to our clients, to connect with our clients um, through the podcast and through social media and email, which the podcast helped us populate. Um, so that was kind of the business reason that we started One Quick Question. So again, we don't we do look at numbers and both of these podcasts grow and they are those that is part of what we look at, but we're also looking at are we is this allowing us to connect with clients because that was really the point of it. So, business podcasts are not great for some things and they are great for others. Um, they are not great for pulling in new customers. It's not saying you're never going to pull in a customer, but Generally speaking, like you're not gonna have a huge audience, again, unless you have a network behind you or you're like aggressively advertising, you're probably not gonna pull in enough of a high audience that you have a percentage that are gonna turn directly into customers. What, it, what a business podcast can do is building loyalty in your existing customers. And by that I mean, so for example, one quick question, we have, now we have, I think, about 100 episodes that are on specific topics that our clients care about. So if a client emails our account team or our support team and asks a question, they can answer that question, but they can also say, oh, if you want more information about this, like, here's a podcast that also answers that question. And 
it's kind of neat to have a podcast, but even beyond that, for a client to know, not only do you know the answer to this question, but you knew enough to anticipate that I would even have the question and you, like you've already created this is, is really powerful for, for building loyalty. And they just listen to the podcast and kind of get to know our staff a little bit better. And that is generally like, we, we have found, especially with our staff, that, that that is really good. Like when we put our staff on social and on the blog and things like those pages perform really well. I don't think a business podcast is great for making ad revenue. So if you're just like, I wanna bring a bunch of money into my business and I'm gonna put a podcast up to do it, just probably, if that's your motivation, it's probably not gonna work. Again, well, ad revenue kind of works by, you can, you can get services that will put ads on your podcast, but you get paid when you get more and more and more people. So you get, they don't just pay a flat fee, they pay kind of per listens. So the chances that you're gonna get thousands and thousands of downloads on these podcasts to where that's really bringing revenue for you are is pretty low. Also, if you have a, a podcast that's about your business and then you're making people to listen to more ads about other businesses, it's just not a great experience. But I think you can use it as a platform for ads about your business. Maybe I should have said ad about your business. I still don't think you should pack this with ads. But, you know, at the end of one quick question, a lot of times we'll say, Infomedia is a web service company. That means we can help you with the, what Michael said, video and copy and hosting. And I don't, I don't think that's strange for the user when they're like, okay, I get it. I got this free content from Infomedia and then I hear a little bit about Infomedia. And I don't think business podcasts are great for creating conversions directly. Now, some of that for Infomedia is because our services are not, they don't cost $20, you know, like it's a, it's kind of a, we want to nurture that, that relationship longer. But it's also just because when are you usually listening to a podcast? You're probably in your car, doing the dishes, going on a walk or a run. And this is really not when you're just like, oh, I'm going to stop what I'm doing right now, dry my hands and buy this thing right now. It's just not the way it really works. But what a business podcast is great for is getting people in the beginning of your funnel. Because asking them to jump from you're listening to this free podcast all the way to you're making a purchase is a lot. It's a lot to expect. But saying like you wanted a free podcast and you also might want a free download of this topic that is similar to the podcast, that's not a big leap. And then you have their email and you can do, you know, like drip campaigns or whatever we're calling them now. Um, like you can, once they're in your funnel, you can kind of work on them the way you would work like another customer. And also, business podcasts are great for these things. Um, building authority. So it does not make sense that people think it's impressive that you're on a podcast platform, but they do. Like if anybody logically thinks through it, almost anyone who pays to be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify not everyone, but almost everyone makes it through. But subconsciously, that's just not how people react. I know I've self-published a lot of my own work and people are very impressed by it. And I'm just like, okay. Like, <laughs> so it is kind of, it acts as that rubber stamp on you know what you're talking about, even though logically you're paying them to put this content up. Um, it helps to establish your team as subject matter experts. So this is a big thing that we use this for at, so, uh, um, at Infomedia. Uh, we, again, we have our developers on the podcast. We have our designers on the podcast. Our support team is on the podcast. So people can see we actually do know what we're talking about. We're not just like, we're even on video. So you can see like we're not reading this. We're not reading off. We really do know. We know this well enough to be able to explain it in a clear way, which means you have to know it like pretty well. Um, it also can be, like a podcast can be really helpful for networking, um, especially if you're bringing guests on the podcast. There are people who say no to being on a podcast, but not very many. And because you're kind of giving the person something, you're giving them promotion. So a lot of people are either going to do it or at least be happy to be asked. Um, so for the localist especially, that was a guest-based podcast. Um, one quick question, we have our own staff on the podcast. But for the localist, 
I was constantly getting to meet new business owners. Like it was helpful in the moment because I could network with them. It also just gave me something cool to talk about because every time somebody would be like, oh, like I saw Continental Drift is opening and I'd be like, oh yeah, I had Johnny and Eric on the podcast and they talked about how, what it's like to be friends and then open a business, you know? So like, it just gives you good stuff to talk about. And it also makes you look more connected. Like when you post that podcast and say, I had this person on the podcast, suddenly people are like, oh, I think that place is cool and they talk to you, so maybe you're cool too. Um, that's the official, that's, that's official marketing language. Um, <laughs> It can also help you address frequently asked questions. Again, you can use that in your support collateral. Um, it's also a great way to figure out topics, like what are the things you get asked all the time? That's probably what people care about. Um, and it can help with your SEO, particularly if you transcript your podcast and make sure that's on your website in the right way that that is being like read by Google. Uh, it helps you to populate email campaigns. So that's actually, I said we started one quick question to connect with clients, and that's true, but we had been challenged by our boss, um, that's told to do something, um, <laughs> to, to do a nurture email campaign, to so send an email to our clients every week. That's really hard, like to think of something interesting to say, like, we are still securing your website, you know, <laughs> still here. Uh, but it was easier for us to come up with content for one quick question and then put, push one quick question out to that email. Now we incorporate it into our newsletter. Um, we, put, we put it on social media. Occasionally, we'll take some of that information and turn it into a blog. So absolutely, your podcast should be like a beginning of, like you should use the information in other ways and like make that work for you even more. Um, the same with social media content. It, I know it's a struggle for probably all of us to get social content. Um, when we started the podcast, that helped. And then all, especially when we started doing a video podcast, it just gives us a clip. It's video and you know, like Instagram loves video. Every, everybody loves video. So that was just nice to have something that we could continually know we have that to post. One thing we didn't expect is that it's help with onboarding. Um, so when, when people come on staff, we can say like, here are five one quick question episodes we really want you to listen to. Um, I, have, I know there are some managers who tell people to listen to the entire <laughs> library, and those people avoid me in the hallways because they are so sick of hearing my voice. Um, <laughs> like, and I don't blame you. Uh, and if, you're, if you have a knowledge base or a training center, this is a great way to populate it. Again, you can link directly to the podcast, or you can do a transcript, or you could do a short article based on this interview, but it really helps to have that. All right, so if you're thinking maybe you should have a business podcast, the things, or a personal brand podcast, the things I think we should think through are what are your goals, can you produce a podcast, and do you have something to say? That's probably should be the first one, but that's not how I made the slides. Um, <laughs> So think about what are your goals? Are any of the things that I mentioned that a business podcast can be good for what you wanna do right now? So if your main goal right now is like, I need to move product or I need to get people in my store, I don't think starting a business podcast is a great use of your time right now because a business podcast is for the long game. So maybe you wanna focus on something else right now. But if you are saying like, we are struggling to get content for social media and emails, or we really wanna populate a knowledge base, then this might be the right, the right time to start. Okay, think through, can you produce a podcast? There are some really good, there are a lot of tutorials, like DIY tutorials out there on how to do it yourself. You can definitely do that. It is very annoying. I, <laughs> I don't like audio and video equipment um, very much. I like the storytelling and the interviewing parts. Um, we do have, so when you came in, you probably saw like there's a QR code, and I'll put it up here too. I have done like a PDF, or really Elena did it, but we put together a PDF of all the equipment that I use and have used in the past. So like my first podcasts were super DIY, and now like we do them at Infomedia, but I put like all the mics we use and what's in my home studio and that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that, that QR code will let you sign up to my email list and you'll immediately or really in the next half hour, get that PDF for free. Um, 
But you're gonna need audio and video equipment. You can find a studio. We do this at Infomedia. There are other studios in town who will do that. Um, or you can do it yourself. You need a place to record. That seems obvious, but like if I recorded in here, it would sound pretty terrible. We are recording in here, but it's not my job to fix that. Um, <laughs> but, um, but as like a, an amateur, this would be really difficult for me to get good sound. It's a really big space. There are not a lot of soft surfaces. Um, there's a lot of echo. So you wanna just have a small space. Now this can be a studio. We have a great studio at Infomedia. Um, but then as soon as we built the studio, everybody went into lockdown. So for the next year or so, I was just like in my closet interviewing people there. And that all worked just fine. I've been in a closet, I've made a blanket fort, I've like done all the things. Um, so you do need to find this, but it's not like you can make this in your house too. Uh, it, it is harder to invite a guest to come to a blanket fort though, so keep that in mind. Um, you'll need a time to record, obviously, but you'll also need time to produce and promote the podcast, which generally takes like four to five times as long um, because the recording is usually about the amount of time you hear on the podcast, but then I usually edit for content. Uh, Paul or Aaron edits for sound. Um, we have to write show notes. We have to create social promotions. Um, all of these things like take a lot of time. Uh, so just no, like you'll need to make sure you have that time if you're wanting to start this, especially for a business, because asking people to just pull little bits of their time here and there is probably going to be pretty difficult. Um, you'll want a host or at least to know who's going to speak on the podcast. Maybe you have a host. Maybe it's only the host. Maybe you have somebody come on as a guest. Maybe you have two people who are always talking to each other or you rotate people out. There are a million ways to do it, but you need someone to host it, and it probably should not be the person who runs the company. They're not always as engaging on a podcast as like makes sense. They're not always saying what you would want to say to clients, um, and they usually don't have time. So maybe that will work, but I wouldn't just assume that's going to work. Uh, and you'll need some upfront setup, uh, which is usually like a few, like several hours, but you kind of have to do that once, so it's not as big of a deal. When you're thinking of what you want to say, do start with your business goals. Again, like an entertainment podcast, you can just talk about like, what do I want to talk about? But if you're doing a podcast for your business, think through like, is this actually like saying what I want to say as a business? Is this gonna be interesting to anybody else? You can do a very niche podcast. You can even just speak to your clients, but is it even gonna be interesting to your clients? Um, so for example, at Infomedia, we have found in the past that if we get really deep into development, like code, our clients are kind of like, that's what we pay you to do. Like, why do I care about this, you know? I mean, what you guys do is really cool for those of you here, but like, but we have found like that content doesn't perform super well for us. So know that it's gonna be like interesting to your audience. And also, and this is the, people, the thing people usually forget, what can you produce consistently? Like I will admit that one quick question, although I love the podcast, I think it's helpful, is it the most interesting thing InfoMedia can do? No, like even just taking Michael, he has an improv group, he's hilarious. Like we could do a funnier podcast, a more engaging podcast, but could we do it every single week and do it and fit it in with everyone else's schedules and still meet the goals that we're trying to meet with this podcast? No. So to be honest, some of your podcast is going to be what you can do in addition to what you want to do. So do you, you want to start a podcast? Great. <laughs> Caleb did this animation. I don't know how to do that. Um, <laughs> Uh, first, decide on content. This is pretty basic. You want to figure out a topic and you want to think, you know, is this going to be a host led podcast? Are you going to have guests? Guests can be great for networking. They can also be annoying for editing, you know, and it's a lot more logistics if you do that. So it's not, neither one is bad. It's just a different thing. Um, decide on logistics. Look how much fun I'm having. Podcasting is so fun. Um, this is definitely not a setup shot. Uh, um, you want to think about how often are you going to post. You could do weekly, bi-weekly, every month. 
a lot of people now are doing like a season. So you might say like, I'm gonna do 10 episodes and do them weekly and then I'm gonna take a break. Um, there really is not a wrong answer here. Uh, weekly probably will help you build an audience faster, but again, like if that's not what your business needs right now, then that's fine. Um, but just think about what you're gonna do. It doesn't have to be exactly what you decide at the beginning, but it is helpful to decide something. Um, how often are you gonna record? So for the localists, I would record essentially the same week that we would run the podcast. But also I was interviewing business owners during COVID, so we had to do that because if we batch recorded it, we would be running it when the world was completely different again and it would sound ridiculous. So, but it's exhausting to do that. Um, so at InfoMedia, we do it differently and we record all at once, like as a batch. Are you gonna do audio or video or both? Um, video, I feel like is very annoying for me and I have learned that I don't like the side of my face. But, <laughs> but again, video performs really well on social and if you do a video podcast, you have access to YouTube, which is I think still maybe the second most powerful search engine. So you, that is, that's a big deal. You have an entire other audience you can reach if you do a video podcast because you can take advantage of YouTube search. And think about the length. It doesn't really matter. You don't have to be exact, but knowing is this gonna be five minutes? Is this gonna be an hour? That is helpful. So when I started, when we started One Quick Question, I had already been doing The Localist and I took everything that annoyed me about The Localist and did it differently for One Quick Question. Um, so here are my tips from that. Starting short is helpful. Now that the caveat to that, I would say, if you are having guests, I would go long because it's very difficult to get a guest to the point you're trying to get them to make in 10 minutes. It's a lot easier to get there like in a longer podcast. But if you have control over it, if it's just you and your staff, start with 10 minutes. If you love it, you can always grow longer, but everything is easier when it's shorter. Getting organized beforehand. I was organized with the localist, but I didn't know what I didn't know. You know, like especially what has been helpful for the one quick question is having a Trello board where you have columns of, you know, is this in concept? Is this, uh, we have a guest idea, we've asked the guest, we've booked the guest, we've recorded, we've edited, it's launched, we've promoted. All of those things are really helpful when you're working with a team especially. I do think have a formula, know how long it's gonna be, know what you're gonna say at the beginning. If you're doing an ad, when is that gonna run? Be flexible with that formula. I'm really not flexible enough with anything in my life, but <laughs> I get very hung up on like, well, it's a 10 minute podcast, so it should be 10 minutes. And that's not true. For podcasts, like people are a lot more loose with that, but just knowing where you're starting can be super helpful. And consider batch recording. So with The Localist, we recorded once a week, but with One Quick Question, we typically record like once every two months or once a quarter. Um, depending on how many we get in, and we just do a big day, block off the day. Um, and I can talk about that more in questions if you want. Um, so if you're interested in doing a podcast, again, there are two ways to do it, DIY or more professional. If you are interested in DIY, um, oh, sorry. Oh, wait. I'm messing this up. All right, here's a QR code, and I'll put it back up in a minute. But this will sign you up for my email list. I am being self-promotional here. I apologize. Um, but you will get a PDF of um, just like all the, the tools that I use. Again, I'm not saying like they're the best in the world, but they've been extremely functional for me. So this is like the mics I use, the uh, way I set my uh, podcast room up, things like that. The, the RSS feed service I use, like all the boring things that I didn't mention in this talk. Um, and I'll put this back up in a second too. But if you've been listening to this and you think like, I do wanna start a podcast, but that sounds terrible. Like I do not wanna do all of this work. InfoMedia can help. Uh, so we do, we have worked with clients to concept a podcast, to put together a season. And in that case, you can come into our studio and record. We push it out to the RSS feeds. We send you the social media content and things like that. One quick question is brought to you by InfoMedia. InfoMedia is a web service company, and that means we do whatever you need done for your website, whether that's shooting video, writing copy, incorporating digital marketing, or even redesigning your whole site. To meet with us, you can email quickquestion at infomedia.com, and we'll set you up with the right people to talk to. 
One Quick Question is developed and hosted by me, Carrie Rollwagon. Find show notes, including links to what we talk about on the podcast today, and links to free tickets of One Quick Question Live at infomedia.com slash quickquestion. Our producer is Elena Harmond. Our theme music is by Brad Davis. And our sound engineering is done by our in-house media team, including Paul Bryant, who's in the studio with me today. So if you need website support, marketing advice, or you're interested in building a new website, give us a call at 205-823-4440 or send us an email. And I'll leave you with this thought. A real expert helps to clarify, not confuse. So don't take website advice from someone who can't give you a straight answer.